Were these actors not bold enough to go where no one has gone before? Or were there other factors behind their refusal of Star Trek roles? As the human Vulcan first officer of the Enterprise and an instant favorite among the fan base, Leonard Nimoy Spock is one of the most iconic characters on television. While it may be hard to imagine anyone but Nimoy playing Spock on Star Trek the original series, the actor was reportedly not series creator Gene Roddenberry's first pick for the part. Instead, Roddenberry favored comedic actor George Lindsay, best known for playing the goofy Goober Pyle on The Andy Griffith Show and its sequel series Mayberry RFD. In a short television bumper for TV Land, Nimoy attests that Lindsay was Roddenberry's first choice for the role that made him a household name. This claim is corroborated by prolific actor Ernest Borgnine in his memoir Ernie, recalling that his friend Lindsay turned the part of Spock down without elaborating on the rationale behind the refusal. Lindsay would continue to play largely comedic roles on film and television for the remainder of his career before his death in 2012. Another actor reportedly offered the role of Spock ahead of Nimoy was Academy Award winner Martin Landau, who had appeared in high-profile supporting roles in films including North by Northwest. In a 1986 interview with Starlog magazine, Landau confirmed he was approached to take the role of the Vulcan science officer but claimed he wasn't interested in playing an emotionless character, unfavorably comparing Spock's stoic nature to a glorified newscaster. Instead, he took on a very different television role, starring as Master of Disguise Roland Hand in the original Mission Impossible TV series. In a separate interview for Where No Man Has Gone Before, A History in Pictures, Roddenberry confirmed Landau was being considered for the role, saying the actor was a possibility. Elaborating on the potential casting, Roddenberry attributed Landau's busy schedule with other projects at the time as the primary cause behind his turning down the role. In a coincidental twist, Nimoy replaced Landau on Mission Impossible as the magician Paris after Landau left the series in 1969, several months after the cancellation of Star Trek. Fascinating. While developing Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, director and co-writer Leonard Nimoy learned that popular comedian and actor Eddie Murphy was apparently a big fan of the franchise. In a retrospective interview with The Hollywood Reporter, co-writer Steve Mearson recalled that an early script contained a part specifically written for Murphy, which would have had the comic powerhouse interact with the Enterprise crew. Murphy was set to play an astrophysicist at Berkeley while the original series crew visited California's Bay Area in 1986 to save their timeline by rescuing humpback whales. No, I want to go, I want to beam up and you know, yeah. be on the ship, and you know, so I didn't do it. So. Yeah, no, you have to be on the Enterprise. Yeah. Negotiations with Murphy reportedly broke down before filming began, however, leading the comedian slash actor to drop out from the project. His planned astrophysicist character was cut from the story entirely and replaced with marine biologist Dr. Jillian Taylor, played by Katherine Hicks. This provided Kirk with a romantic foil. Acclaimed actor Edward James Olmos had two close opportunities to be cast in major Star Trek roles, though he ultimately has yet to appear in any iteration of the franchise. Director Leonard Nimoy approached Olmos to play the villainous Commander Krug in Star Trek III The Search for Spock, but was overruled by the producers according to William Shatner's memoir Star Trek Movie Memories. However, Olmos' second brush with Star Trek saw him turn down an even bigger opportunity with the long-running sci-fi franchise that would have made him an esteemed Starfleet captain. According to TrekMovie.com, he was offered to star as Picard in Star Trek The Next Generation, reportedly turning down the part because of its high level of commitment and his own schedule at the time. In an interview with the AB Club, Olmos explained that his decision to return to sci-fi in Battlestar Galactica over his previous Star Trek offer was driven by the quality of storytelling present in the series' writing. The late celebrated actor Yafit Koto has starred in a number of fan-favorite projects in film and television, including a part as Nostromo technician Dennis Parker in the classic science fiction horror film Alien. Koto nearly took on an even more iconic sci-fi role as Captain Jean-Luc Picard, the lead character in Star Trek The Next Generation. According to a BBC interview with producer Robert Justman, series creator Gene Roddenberry was initially not enthused by Patrick Stewart's audition for the part and looked to other actors to take on the role. Among the actors who read for the character was Kodo, who turned down the part over his concerns about shifting to television following a prolific film career. In an interview with The Big Issue, Kodo reflected on this decision with regret, referring to his rejection of the chance to play Picard as a wrong decision. Ironically, he would transition to a television career years later, starring as Baltimore police detective Al Giardello across the entire run of the acclaimed crime series Homicide Life on the Street. The 1989 film Star Trek V The Final Frontier introduces Spock's long-lost older brother Cybok, who commandeers the Enterprise to find God at the center of the galaxy. Played by Lawrence Luckinbill, Cybok is a Vulcan in touch with and open about his emotions. 
The character was written for Sean Connery, fresh off of his Academy Award-winning performance in The Untouchables, but the Scottish actor turned down the part. According to TrekMovie.com, Connery rejected the role due to his commitments to appear in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Despite Connery's absence in The Final Frontier, the film's holy planet, Shah Kari, was named after him as a subtle nod to the intended casting. Years later, it was revealed that a different actor, very familiar to Trekkies, apparently vied for the Cybok role unsuccessfully. In an interview with StarTrek.com, Luckinbill claims that Nimoy lobbied to play Cybok for a dual role in Star Trek V, but was rejected because the siblings weren't twins. Excuse me, I find that selection highly illogical. As Star Trek The Next Generation steadily grew in popularity across its seven-season run, the writers wanted to find a way to include actor and comedian Robin Williams in a guest appearance. Williams was a self-professed fan of Star Trek, even going so far as to reference the franchise directly in his hit sci-fi sitcom Mork and Mindy. The writers created a part specifically for Williams in the Season 5 episode A Matter of Time as Berlinghoff Rasmussen, a time-traveling con man scheming to steal Starfleet technology for himself. Unfortunately, scheduling conflicted with the 1991 Steven Spielberg film Hook, which prevented him from appearing on The Next Generation. Rasmussen was instead played by actor Matt Frewer, best known for his 80s cult classic character Max Headroom. Kim Cattrall appeared in Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country as Valeris, Spock's young Vulcan protege on the Enterprise and the starship's new helmsman after Sulu is given his own command. Though Valeris is eventually revealed to be a traitor and part of the conspiracy to assassinate Klingon Chancellor Gowron, Cattrall nearly had a continuing future with the wider Star Trek franchise on television. However, rather than reprising her role as the duplicitous Vulcan Valeris, Cattrall was offered the part of Bajoran security officer Kira Norris in Star Trek Deep Space Nine. In a leaked casting memo for Deep Space Nine from 1992, Cattrall is among the names appearing near the top of the list to play the no-nonsense Bajoran freedom fighter. She is cited in the memo as passing on the role, though no further explanation behind her decision is included in the document. Cattrall would find considerable success elsewhere on television, starring as the vivacious businesswoman and socialite Samantha Jones, a role she also nearly turned down in the acclaimed HBO series Sex in the City. There are plenty of other names on the leaked casting memo for Kira in Deep Space Nine, all of whom are listed as a pass or unavailable. Next to Cattrall, the most notable actor on the list is Rita Wilson, prolific television and film actor and wife of lifelong Star Trek fan Tom Hanks. However, like Cattrall and the other actors under consideration, Wilson turned down the role with the memo citing she wasn't interested in working in television at the time. Interestingly, Nana Visitor, who ultimately was cast as Kira for Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Lower Decks, is not among the names listed on the memo. Visitor's agent cautioned her against taking the role, feeling it would be detrimental to her career. But as Variety explains, she was impressed by the character and accepted. Wilson has gone on to play numerous supporting roles in film and television, notably as recurring characters on The Good Wife and Girls. While Kate Mulgrew may be best known for bringing Catherine Janeway to life in the television shows Star Trek Voyager and Star Trek Prodigy, she was not the first actor cast in the role. Academy Award-nominated actor Genevieve Bougeau was initially cast as the Voyager commanding officer Captain Nicole Janeway, maintaining the role as principal photography began in 1994. However, as the New York Times reports, two days into filming, Bougeau decided to quit the series over concerns regarding the show's demanding work schedule. She's keeping me awake for four days straight with the constant pain of your devices drilling into my skull. Mulgrew, who was among the actors that initially read for the role of Janeway during the casting process, was called back in the wake of Bougeau's sudden departure and accepted the lead part. With the character renamed Catherine Janeway to reflect the shift in actors, Mulgrew quickly brought the memorable captain to life as filming resumed. For her part, Bougeau returned to focus primarily on film work with the occasional TV movie. She never starred as the lead in a television series across her distinguished career. Audiences were treated to a bold reinvention of the Star Trek franchise in 2009, with filmmaker J.J. Abrams helming a reboot movie that recast the classic characters from the original series. Among the iconic crew reimagined for the film was Spock, played by Zachary Quinto across the trilogy as a Vulcan with a fiery temper under his stoic exterior. However, Quinto was not the only actor in consideration for the role. Academy Award winner Adrian Brody was approached by Abrams to potentially portray the Enterprise's logical first officer. In an interview with MTV, Brody confirmed he spoke with Abrams about playing Spock in the 2009 Star Trek, even sharing the news of his potential casting with his parents. Though he expressed regret about not taking the part, he has not fully divulged specifics as to why he didn't appear as the iconic science officer. With the new, younger cast of the original series era front and center in the 2009 Star Trek, one of the actors widely rumored to be considered to play James Kirk was Matt Damon. 
Damon himself publicly dismissed the casting as internet rumors, observing that the reboot was looking for a younger actor for the role. However, months after the movie was released, it was revealed that Damon was being considered for a different character. Abrams confirmed that he did approach Damon for a role in the film, later clarifying in an interview with MTV that he spoke to him about playing James Kirk's father, George. Abrams revealed that Damon graciously turned down the role, so Australian actor Chris Hemsworth played the ill-fated George Kirk instead. 2013 Star Trek Into Darkness is a strange sequel, offering a loose retread of Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan within the storytelling sensibilities of the reboot timeline that began in 2009. The film pits the Enterprise crew against the genetically enhanced superhuman Khan Noonien Singh, the classic villainous role originated by Ricardo Montalban. Academy Award winner Benicio Del Toro entered negotiations to play the reboot timeline's iteration of Khan during a time when the identity of the movie's antagonist remained unconfirmed in the face of mounting speculation. According to Vulture, Del Toro decided to drop out of Into Darkness after salary negotiations broke down, approximately one month before filming was scheduled to begin. Instead, English actor Benedict Cumberbatch played Khan in the final film. Into Darkness endured criticism for casting a Caucasian actor as Khan, while director J.J. Abrams admitted attempting to keep Khan's true identity a secret was a mistake. Del Toro would go on to play two very different sci-fi roles in Star Wars The Last Jedi and Guardians of the Galaxy.